Motion is two-way, for all motion is caused by the division of an equilibrium and its extension in two opposite directions to create the two opposite conditions of pressures necessary to make motion imperative. One of these two, condi two conditions of electric motion thrust inward toward a center to create a centrifugal vortex to simulate gravity. On the other side of the dividing equator, the other condition thrust outward from a center to create a centrifugal vortex to simulate vacuity. Moving waves of oppositely conditioned matter simulate substance but there is no substance to the motion which simulates idea in matter. If a cobweb could move fast enough, it would simulate a solid steel disk, and it could cut through steel. If such a thing could happen, it would not be the substance of the cobweb which cut through the steel. It would be the motion which cut it. Fast-moving short waves simulate solids, while slow-moving, long waves simulate the gases of space which surround solids. Waves of motion are substance-less, however. They merely simulate substance. Motion itself is controlled by the mind of the Creator who uses it to express His desire for simulating ideal of mind by giving it a formed body. There is no other purpose for motion. Desire in the light of mind for creative expression is the only energy in this universe. All motion is mind motivated. All motion records mind thoughts in matter. All matter is but pressure conditioned motion. Varying pressure conditions yield varying states of motion. Varying states of motion are what science misinterprets as the elements of matter. Varying pressures in a wave are tonal. In each octave wave, there are four pairs of tones, each of which has the same relative position in its octave color spectrum as it has in its octaves of chemical elements. Waves are, therefore, electric pressure condition octaves of tones. The Secret of the Ages Step by simple step, I will briefly unfold the supreme mystery of all time to enable science to void the confusion which has arisen from its inability to relate the reality of the invisible universe to its simulation of reality, which has so regrettably deceived the senses of observers for all time. I do this not only for science, but for the great need of religion, which so sorely needs a God who can be known by all men as one, to replace the many imagined concepts of God which have so disastrously disunited the human race. No one, save the few mystics of long ages, has ever known God or God's ways. Neither has mankind yet known the meaning of love upon which the universe is founded, nor of life, which is the electric universe, which the electric universe simulates in never-ending cycles, nor of cause of the effects for which man so heavily pays in tears and anguish for his not knowing, nor of the constitution of matter, nor of God's invisible processes in the creation of pressures for conditioning matter. The long-heralded peace which passes understanding awaits for science to tear away the veil which has for so long hidden the face of the Creator. Religion can be one only by dispelling the ignorance which now cloaks the faith and belief God of fear which has bred so many intolerant groups of unknowing men. We speak familiar, familiarly about the spiritual, invisible mind universe of the Creator, and we speak with equal familiarity about the physical universe of matter, which we call creation. 
but the world has not yet known either of them separately, nor their unity as one, to sufficiently define either, either of them scientifically. I will now do this as simply as possible, in order that the physicists of tomorrow can know and comprehend the universe as one whole, instead of sensing it as many separate parts which he will never be able to fit together. The Undivided Light The basis of creation is the light of the mind which created it. God is the light of mind. God's thinking mind is all there is. Mind is universal. Mind of God and mind of man are one. This eternally creating universe, which is God's eternally renewing body, is the product of mind knowing expressed through mind thinking. In the light of God's mind is all knowledge. All knowledge means full knowing of the Creator's one idea, which is manifested in His creation. The undivided and unconditioned light of mind is an eternal state of rest. This invisible light of the Spirit is the equilibrium of absolute balance and absolute stillness, which is the foundation of the divided and pressure-conditioned universe of motion. In that light there is no change, no variance of condition, no form, and no motion. It is the zero universe of reality. In it are all of the mind qualities of knowledge, inspiration, power, love, truth, balance, and law, which are never created but are simulated by moving qualities, no, by moving quantities in the divided universe of moving waves which we call matter. The light of mind is the zero fulcrum of the wave lever from which motion is projected. Its zero condition is eternal. The unfortunate era of science lies in assuming that the power which, belo which belongs solely to the fulcrum of light at rest is in the motion of the lever which simulates that power. The divided light. In the light of the Creator's mind is desire to dramatize His one ideal by dividing its one unconditioned, unchanging unity of balance and rest into pairs of oppositely conditioned units, which must forever interchange with each other to seek balance and rest. Desire then multiplies those pairs of units into an infinity of eternal repetitions to give formed bodies to the Creator's imagining. All formed bodies are created in His image. Through the expression of desire in light, this universal drama of cause and effect is created as a product of mind knowing divided by mind thinking.